Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be taking a look at Zinedine Zidane in Tactics Explained, giving you a bite sized overview of his profile as a manager. Remember to subscribe if you're new, smash the like button. But anyway, let's get this party started. Born in Marseille in 1972, Zinedine Zidane is a former professional footballer who played in attacking midfield. One of the greatest players of his time, Zidane began his career at Cannes in 1989 before playing for Bordeaux, Juventus and Real Madrid, ultimately retiring in 2006. Across his 16-year career, the French superstar won 15 major honours throughout his career, as well as a whole host of personal accolades, including three FIFA World Player of the Year awards and the 1998 Ballon d'Or. After hanging up his boots in 2006, Zidane returned to football in 2010 as a first-team advisor to Jose Mourinho's Real Madrid. A year later, he was appointed the sporting director of the Spanish Giants before becoming Carlo Ancelotti's assistant manager in 2013 as Madrid lifted their 10th Champions League title in 2014. Zidane then proceeded to work with the reserve team as he earned his coaching badges before being appointed as first team Real Madrid manager in January 2016. In his two and a half seasons in charge, Zizou won three consecutive Champions League titles, an unprecedented era of success, as well as the 16-17 La Liga title. After walking away from the club five days after winning the Champions League in the 2017-18 season, Zidane returned in March 2019 to steady the ship. In his two full seasons, Zidane's Madrid picked up more points than anyone else in the Liga, lifting the 1920 title and conceding the fewest goals in the Spanish top flight in 30 years. But like in 2018, Zidane resigned at the end of the season, and at the time of this video is without a job. But what is his style of play? Tactically, Zinedine Zidane has shown himself to be excellent. The Frenchman has used a range of shapes throughout his career, often choosing the system that gives his side a natural advantage against the opposition. His go-to shape, though, is a 4-3-3. In the 263 games in charge of Real Madrid, Zizou deployed this shape 68% of the time. Zizou's first Madrid side was built on Casemiro at defensive midfield, operating as a destroyer, allowing Tony Cruz and Luka Modric to operate as playmakers, orchestrating Madrid's play. This allowed the fullbacks to hold the width and the front three to operate as strikers, creating a 2-3-5 in possession. Whilst this was Zidane's system, we saw him evolve and adapt accordingly, using pragmatism to create the best chance for success. His back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back Champions League winners really highlights this evolution. His 15-16 winners mostly played in a 4-3-3. They'd create the aforementioned 2-3-5 in possession, using Marcelo as a creator in the final third, whilst out of possession they drop into a 4-5-1. To protect the lead in a second leg or to see out a game, Ronaldo would be moved central and the wide players would be replaced by hard-working and the youthful energy of Lucas Vasquez and Marco Asensio. Meanwhile, his 16-17 winners saw a shift, with Gareth Bale missing nearly 30 matches through injury, incredible midfielders, mobile forwards and attacking fullbacks. Madrid's squad was custom-made for a 4-4-2 diamond as Isco replaced the injured Bale at number 10. This shape also countered the flat 4-4-2 that was popular in that season, with a natural overload in central areas that allowed Isco and Cruz to operate in between the opponent's lines. And finally, in the 17-18 season, Zidane opted a 4-4-2 at times to maximise Ronaldo's output. This was Ronaldo's best goal-scoring season under Zidane, as 27% of his goals came from inside the six-yard box, the largest share in his career. This shape also saw Luka Modric thrive on his way to his controversial Ballon d'Or win in 2018. But this didn't stop Zidane deferring to his favourite 4-3-3 when he saw fit. He did most notably for the Champions League final as his changes saw Madrid beat Liverpool three goals to one. Despite the pragmatism, Zidane does have core principles. Unlike many of the most successful coaches in the modern game, Zidane favours simplicity. The Frenchman creates a system that is player focused and allows his star men to make the correct decisions. He just chooses the right star man on the right occasion. We saw this in the 16-17 season, where he used Isco at the tip of the diamond in the business end of the season, as opposed to Marco Asensio or James Rodriguez. We also saw this when he brought Gareth Bale back in from the cold in the 17-18 Champions League final, when he subbed the Welshman in to score the winner and the third goal that killed the game. Despite focusing on creating an environment for his players to make the difference, 
There were consistencies with Zizou's tactics. Where possible, he uses a three man midfield with two playmakers anchored by a destroyer. Famously, this was Tony Cruz and Luka Modric ahead of Casemiro. At their peak, this central trio completely controlled the tempo of the game. If Madrid were winning, they could dominate the ball and slow down the play to keep their opposition at arm's length. But if they were losing, they could quickly quicken the pace before looking for defence splitting passes to their forwards or switches of play to their marauding fullbacks. Luka Modric got a lot of praise in 2018 for this, but Tony Cruz was the real dominator from his deep lying role. In the 16 17 final against Juventus, Cruz controlled everything with more touches than anyone else and completing 92% of his 73 passes. It was also fouled six times the most in the game, which shows how the opposition couldn't get near the German playmaker. What's also interesting is that these playmakers were more orchestrators, pulling the strings of the entire team rather than just the creative ones in the final third like we're used to seeing with the likes of Kevin De Bruyne and Bruno Fernandes. Instead, the creativity came from the fullbacks, operating like wingers which allowed Madrid's prolific wide men, notably Cristiano Ronaldo, to play closer to goal where they could have a bigger impact. A lot is made of Marcelo's attack in prowess, but Danny Carvajal slipped under the radar in terms of creativity. During Real Madrid's hat-trick of Champions League wins, Carvajal registered nine assists, one more than Marcelo managed and more than any other fullback in the Champions League during that period. This system has since been adopted by a number of coaches and it's perhaps most apparent in Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool. Although instead of the guile of Modric and Cruz, Klopp used the industry of Henderson and Wijnaldum on his way to winning the 2019-20 Premier League. But it's this simplistic but highly effective system that you see Zidane shine. His aura as a footballing great means he commands the respect of all of his players. It's this ability to unite a dressing room and to convince superstars to sacrifice for the team that's seen him become so successful as a manager. We saw this with Cristiano Ronaldo. His two and a half years under Zidane weren't his most prolific in terms of raw goals and assists, but they were Ronaldo's best years in Spain in terms of trophies won. More than half of his 15 trophies in a Madrid shirt came during Zizou's 30-month spell in charge, as the Frenchman finally tuned Ronaldo into the ultimate big game player. In fact, Ronaldo scored more Champions League goals under Zinedine Zidane than anyone else in his career. Perhaps not a tactical genius or revolutionary like Pep Guardiola, Zidane is an expert in man management, and when given a squad of superstars, he'll win trophies with a substance over style approach. His return spell to Madrid saw the 4-3-3 remain his go-to shape, but, it wasn't nearly as attractive as his Champions League winners. Without his star power in attack, Zidane played safety first football, not committing both fullbacks as high up the pitch at the same time, resembling more of an asymmetrical 3 3 4 as opposed to the all out 2 3 5 of yesteryear. Despite appearing negative, this was a much needed approach for Madrid. Whilst they never threatened in Europe, Zidane's men set the best defensive record in La Liga for 30 years on their way to the title in 2020. A world-class man-manager that gets respect because of his ability as a player, Zinedine Zidane is a tactically very astute manager that's comfortable with a number of different shapes and systems. Whilst he's never built a team up from the ground, his ability to get the best out of superstars means he'll turn a team of great players into winners. But anyway guys, what do you think? How good is Zinedine Zidane and where do you think he'll be managing next? Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe if you're new. I've been Statman Dave. See you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?